One of the craziest things about winter is winter is not over until it's over. Uh, by the way, welcome here to Welch Family Homestead. And one of the greatest challenges that people have building out their farm, especially in their garden, is the weather. And up here on Welch Family Homestead, we have the craziest weather. We have a semi-high elevation. We're here in the Western North Carolina mountains and it's, it's windy at times. Uh, tonight, we're gonna have a lot of wind. It's gonna be gusts around 35 miles an hour. That's not too bad. The other day we had gusts up to 50 miles per hour. And, but when we have those types of gusts, things can move around. One of the things that I noticed, even a empty five gallon uh, fuel can was blowing probably 150 feet from its location just because of the wind being so strong. You have to make sure that your structures are in place, that they're anchored down well. If you have uh, shed roofs coming off of your barns or your sheds that uh, are resting on posts, on beams, you need to remember that the wind can get up underneath those roofs, even if they're built good. I mean, they can get under that, they can be lifted up, they can be torn off. Uh, you can have projectiles. There's so many different things around the farm that you can be, um, you can leave laying, you think it's okay, but when the wind gets up and it catches it a certain way, it can, it can send that object, especially if it's a piece of tin, uh, it could be uh, some types of uh, four by eight sheets of plywood or cut pieces of, pl of plywood that the wind can catch it and it can throw it around. You need to make sure that projectiles are not able to be picked up by the wind. Secure, secure all of your loose items, especially when you have a windy environment coming that has been predicted by the weather services. Well, tonight, I mean, it's a beautiful day right now. I mean, you can see it's gorgeous. You can see the blue skies in the background. It's great. Uh, we planted some onions the other day. This is in early March. We're not really out of winter yet, but at the same time, I've been keeping a watch on the weather. I do realize that we're going to expect a few more cold days. Uh, we could have several more frosts. That is the reason that I didn't take uh, the initiative to plant certain vegetables because I knew that those frosts would would take them out. They would, it would kill them. It's okay to plant onions, potatoes early, and some root vegetables. That, that's fine. But you have to remember that if you plant certain uh, things in your garden too early and you have a few beautiful days like this and they start sprouting out the tender uh, leaves of that small plant when it's first starting and when the when the frosts come in it's going to do damage to your garden and then then you're going to have to replant or you're going to have rows of of sparsely uh growing plants in other words a few may make it but most won't and you're going to have a poorly uh, managed garden at the beginning of your season now tonight you know we've had about a good week of 60 degree weather, 70 degree weather. It's been very nice. We've had plenty of rains. We've had good rain soaking into the soil. We have about 60 inches of, uh, of rainfall here in this county of Western North Carolina. It has twice as much uh, rainfall as the national average. And so we're blessed with, with moisture. We're blessed with rain. The soil is very, uh, very wet right now, and um, we have good soil that we planted our garden in, that we've started planting our garden, garden in, but we restrict it only to plant onions so far. Uh, we haven't planted potatoes yet. We will soon. Uh, we'll plant other vegetables soon as well. But tonight, we're going into a winter storm. There's a front coming through. The temperatures are going to drop. Uh, tomorrow's high temperature is around 27, 28 degrees. It's not even going to get above freezing. Tomorrow night, we're expecting the lows to be somewhere around 8 degrees Fahrenheit. That is extremely cold. In fact, 
all winter long, we have not had a single temperature drop that low all winter long. And here we are in March and we're about to get our coldest night ever. Not only that, uh, the weather uh, services say that we will have a potential of, of six inches of snow tonight and tomorrow. So uh, that can affect things. However, I will say this, that sometimes snow is good for the garden. Uh, when it melts, it will melt in slowly. It melts in slowly into the ground and it saturates the ground much better than a typical downpour of rain that will run off and not soak into your garden. So sometimes snow is good for your garden. Another way that snow can be good for your garden is that even though it's ice, it's a form of ice, it can act as an insulator. In other words, if the snow comes in before those frigid temperatures start freezing the wet ground, you know, it's ground that's not wet, it has no moisture in it, it, has nothing to freeze so much. So you don't get that hard, crusty, frozen soil. But if you have a wet ground, like we've had a lot of rain over the last four or five days, and, um, and so that ground is wet in the garden, I can't even plow. I could not even attempt to plow the garden right now because if I did, the plows would go through the garden and it would churn that dirt that's wet and it would be basically churning mud and it would be when it dried it would pack tight it'd be like a rock it would ruin the garden if i tried to plow right now because the the ground is so wet now when the ground is wet and we have these frigid temperatures coming through like we do tonight and tomorrow on tomorrow night uh, tomorrow night, again, it's going to get down to 8 degrees Fahrenheit. It could get down lower than that because I'm actually in a little bit higher elevation here in the Appalachian Mountains, where I am, than where the weather services are actually predicting that 8 degrees in the city limits, which is about a 15-minute drive from me. So I'm in a little bit higher elevation. I could be down to 5 or 6 degrees tomorrow night. Now it's not, the beautiful beautiful part about that is, is it's not going to last long. But if it gets down to those frigid weather, that frigid weather tomorrow night, and it snows tonight and tomorrow, and it puts a blanket of six inches of snow on the ground, and we don't get above 26 or 27 degrees tomorrow, well, think about that. That means that snow that hits tonight and tomorrow is not going to melt off yet not until it gets warmer. So when those temperatures drop on down tomorrow night to eight degrees, that blanket of snow that comes in tonight and tomorrow will act as a thermal blanket. Even though it's a frozen ice, the snow is, you need to remember what is the temperature of ice. The temperature of ice is, a, is majorly constant, um, pretty constant, right, right around that 30 to 32 degrees, mostly around 32 degrees, it's going to stay there. And that's going to be that blanket of insulation on the, on the soil of the freshly plowed garden, which it's down behind the tractor here. I have a whole valley that's plowed up and only a little bit of it's planted, like I say, with onions. But when that blanket of snow comes in tonight and tomorrow, where those temperatures are gonna be around 30 degrees, the soil will not have time to freeze before that blanket of snow attaches itself. It'll be cold enough for the snow to stick, but it will not be cold enough when it comes through for the soil to have frozen deep below it. So that blanket of snow at 32 degrees is going to insulate the soil below and keep it from getting extremely cold when that eight degree weather comes in tomorrow night. So I'm happy about the, the pattern of it. Let me tell you how that works a little bit with the ice being a thermal blanket and helping um, vegetation to survive. If I was in Florida, which I'm in Western North Carolina mountains, but if I were in Florida and I had an orange grove and, and there was an expectation of freezing weathers, what do they do in the orange groves? 
They literally go into the orange groves and they turn on the sprinkler systems and they coat all of the, all of the orange trees with ice. In other words, they allow that freezing weather when it comes through, they spray water on the trees, the orange groves, so that it coats the trees with an ice. And it sounds crazy to a certain point. You would think, how's that protecting it? Because it is coating that tree with a blanket of ice that is 32 degrees that keeps it from going below that point and therefore not allowing the frosts, the weather, to kill out those buds and those flowers and the, and the vegetation that is, uh, that is basically the livelihood of those farmers that are growing the oranges in the orange groves. That's, that's one of the best ways to protect vegetation is actually to coat it with a substance that doesn't get below 32 degrees. And so ice can be a thermal blanket. Now, this is just part one of this video because we're talking about this subject that is so cool to talk about right now because here we are in late winter. We're about to go into spring. Spring is gonna happen in March 21st as we move out of winter into spring. And that doesn't necessarily mean that cold weather is gonna stop on March 21st. We've had some of our largest snows in April, folks. I mean, we can have frost and we can have winter weather that last even into the early spring or mid spring. So we have to plan for that when we're planting our gardens. We have to plan for that when we have uh, farm animals that we're trying to tend to, making sure that they are in a safe place and they're not too cold. Uh, everyone that is homesteading, when you're listening to me here, if, if you can just hear one major thing that you need to do more than anything else that you're gonna get used to once you start homesteading, you're gonna keep a watch on the weather. You're, you're gonna watch that weather every day. You're gonna know when the weather's coming, the expectations. Sometimes the weather reports are not totally accurate. Sometimes it says it's gonna be a beautiful day and it actually turns out it's not a beautiful day. Sometimes you look into the weather and you're looking two or three days in advance on the weather channel and you're thinking, okay, it's going to be a certain temperature on Saturday. And and I've been doing that this week. And, it, and Saturday has said uh, certain temperatures that have changed. The weather reports change. At first it said it was gonna get down to 12 degrees tomorrow night. Then it went down to 10 degrees tomorrow night. And that now when I check it, which we're getting closer to that date and that time tomorrow night, um, now it's saying eight degrees for the uh, city limit area where they actually post that particular uh, uh, temperature. I'm a little higher elevation, so I'm going to take a take a temp uh, uh, a degree or two off of that temperature. So if it says eight degrees on the Weather Channel. I'm going to assume at my elevation that I'm going to be more right around five or six or seven degrees um, Fahrenheit. But the beautiful part is not, it's not going to last. It's, this weather is only going to last for about 24 hours or so. After, when I say 24, about 36 hours, more like 36 hours. And uh, then it'll, it will warm up and we'll have a beautiful day or two. The snows will start melting. It'll soak that water slowly into the dirt. You can't have any better water saturation into your garden other than the melting of snow. So I'll give you an update on part two here at Welch Family Homestead in regards to this winter storm that is coming through starting tonight. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll keep you updated. I appreciate you listening to the video here today. And I hope this helps and I hope this will educate you on how to prepare for your weather. And we'll have other videos as well that will, uh, will help you as well in regards to that. And we'll give you the outcomes. We're not going to do everything perfect. We're going to do some things that are um, right. We're going to do some things that are wrong. We're going to do some things that are beyond our control because we didn't, we didn't have the warning. We didn't have the correct information. Sometimes the weatherman... We call it the weather, man. The weather report is not accurate. Sometimes it's it's totally off. It may say eight degrees tomorrow night. It may be much colder. It may be a little bit warmer. 
They're saying six inches of snow starting tonight uh, and tomorrow, and uh, it may not snow more than an inch. It may not snow at all. Um, so sometimes weather fronts hit and miss, especially up here in the mountains. A mountain range sometimes can be tall enough that that weather front can't get over it. And we have some very tall mountains around here. I actually, from here at the Welch Family Homestead, have I have the Welch Family Homestead is all the way from the top of the mountain, all the way down through the valley, all, all the way down to the highway. And also from ridge to ridge, it's a fairly sizable piece of property here that that I came across 20 plus years ago. And about 20 plus years ago, right around 20 years ago, almost to the date is when I actually came across it and uh, made the deal to invest into this area of the country. And the reason I wanted to do this is for the homesteading lifestyle that I'm presenting to you right now. So anyway, subscribe to my channel here. Don't miss out on our next video, which is going to be a follow-up of this one, part two of of the challenges of the weather at Welch Family Homestead. God bless.